Hi, I'm Sean Foy from Sean Foy Makes Movies, and this is the pilot episode of The Lonely Creative. There's eventually going to be some kind of crap. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's pretty sad. Could have to work on that. Hi, thanks for tuning in. Um, the reason I'm trying to make this series, The Lonely Creative, is I'm a filmmaker and a writer, and I do both of those things primarily by myself. Right now, I don't really have any friends that I make films with. Uh, I write by myself. I don't have friends that are writing novels or anything. Um, but let me give you a little background. As I said, I'm a filmmaker. I've made over a dozen short films. I directed a feature film when I was 29, which was a long time ago. No, you can't see it anywhere. My last short film, Little Giant, won a couple of awards last year. I'm currently in post-production on my latest short film called Keep You. which is my first foray into the horror genre. I've also written a novel um, that I'm trying to query right now. But as I said, I do these things by myself. And if, you know, if you're like me and you're doing anything creative on your own, a lot of times you know it's, it's hard to sit there by yourself and do it, to motivate yourself to keep doing it. And when you finally do do something and you put it out into the world, it's like shouting into the void. <laughs> A brief history. Professionally, I uh, am a freelance producer, director. I do some writing, uh, DP, and editor. Um, and I've started to get into a little bit of VFX. Um, but I do that in the corporate world, um, which is fine. It's work. I own my own production company. I'm a one-man band. It's just me. I do hire other freelancers at times. But it's not, it's not why I got into this business. It's not why I got into doing what I do. When I was growing up, there were two things that I wanted to be. I wanted to be a writer, and I wanted to be Luke Skywalker. And I say that in all seriousness. I was eight years old when the first Star Wars movie, A New Hope, came out. Yeah, if you're doing the math, I'm about to be 53. You know, I wanted to be Luke Skywalker. Han Solo was way cooler than I would ever be. I know. But I could relate more to Luke anyway. He was this guy who had these grand dreams, impossible dreams, and he actually did get picked and he was the chosen one. He had to go save the universe. I don't know if people my age remember in the 80s, there was a movie called The Last Starfighter. It was kind of the same thing on a much smaller scale. Alex Rogan had a dream. But that was great. That's what I wanted to do. I mean, like I said, I was eight years old, so I, I knew none of that was real, none of that was ever going to happen. So I decided that I wanted to be the next best thing to Luke Skywalker. I wanted to be an actor. A slightly smaller chance of that happening than being plucked to save the universe, I guess. So in sixth grade, I was king not so charming anymore in my school musical. I took an acting class that summer, and then for various reasons, I was embarrassed to tell people that I wanted to be an actor. And so I never did anything about it. So I never became an actor. But another thing I loved was computers. I had bought my own uh, first computer at Texas Instruments and a TV for money from my paper route. And I liked to make games. I, uh, I would make these blocky graphics for my friends' games and then I would write and program my own games. And I remember I had one big project I was doing. It was um, a text adventure game were big in the 80s and it was just you could type anything in and it would react to it uh, and if it didn't understand it would tell you and ask again and if there's one image that I'm going to leave you with I want you to, to remember this because this is kind of what this series is all about I remember having problems in the programming and something kept crashing and you know, there were all kinds of parts that did that and I'd be sitting at my desk by myself in my room after school trying to figure out what was going wrong and I'd look out the window down below on the driveway, my brother and his friends would be playing basketball. And I think, man, it looks like they're having a lot more fun than me. And there were days I would go out there, you know, I grew up playing sports. I played basketball and soccer and volleyball, but mostly I would sit there. I would just remember, like, I, that's what I had to do. Even though it was a puzzle that I made myself, that I was making myself solve, that nothing bad would happen if I didn't do it, that's what I wanted to do, and I loved it. And Filmmaking is the same thing for me now. I think one person besides myself ever played that game. I did get it working. You can see the poster, a little bit of it right there, Pendragon. Anyway, so like I said, I was afraid to tell people that I wanted to be an actor. So when I went to college, I went for computer science. And then I decided that computer science was kind of boring. I thought sitting in a room with a bunch of other people just 
typing away and learning to program and how to alphabetize a list in five different computer languages. I know there's way more to it, but that's what I was doing in college and it was just not for me. So I switched it to a minor and I majored in finance, which I loathed. And that's when I graduated with my degree, I temped in a few offices as an accountant, which I loathed even more. And so I took out another student loan and I moved to New York and I went to the NYU School of Continuing Education, the film program, and that was heaven. And I know they have a similar program now. I think the school might be called something different, but it was great. There were like 50 people from all over the world with various levels of experience. People like me who had no experience and then people, uh, one of the friends I made there was an actor in Australia, um, people who've been making films, but we all came together for a single semester and we would go to class all day and then we'd make movies at night and on weekends. And it was, it was great. I, I was in my element. I knew that this is what I was supposed to do. This is what I really wanted to do with my life. And then film school ended and my group was me from the US, um, a Canadian, a Frenchman, and two Australians. And when school ended, they went back to Canada and France and Australia, and I've never seen them again. So anyway, I worked some jobs in New York, and then I moved back to Pennsylvania where I grew up and uh, did a job, I made a feature documentary, and then my girlfriend at the time and I bought a car, we moved to California. And I started working on film sets, uh, first as an extra, then a PA, I worked my way up to camera loader, uh, second second AD and eventually first AD on commercials and other videos. I started working for um, Back when Disney owned the Angels and the Ducks. I worked for the both of those teams uh, for the Jumbotron crew and I shot and directed a whole bunch of com in-house commercials for the team for the in-house vendors. I directed two TV commercials for the Angels. Show me the monkey! Believe in the power of the rally monkey. Don't miss Angels Rally Monkey Rally Tell Night, Saturday, August 26th versus the Cleveland Indians. Come on, they're coming they're back! Coming back. No, they're coming back! I hope we're not too late. I'm so scared. We missed it. I am never leaving early again. So things were kind of going the right direction. I made a bunch of friends on the film sets that I worked with often, and we made a couple short films together, and then they started to realize they weren't making any money and so they went to office jobs and bartending school and to become teachers and and then we moved to Minnesota for a little over a year and I kind of had to start all over again and then she got a job back on the East Coast where we're both from um, and so we moved to the East Coast and I had to get started again we got married she's now my wife so that's a good part of the story but I started working in corporate video in Massachusetts and that's where I've been forever and that's not why I got into doing this, as I said. And so I do stuff on my own still. I get my family to come in, I get my kids to act in my movies, and we have a lot of fun. It takes me forever to do a project because I'm doing it myself. I'm writing it, directing it, shooting it, editing it. Left field, Bugs Bunny. Right field, Bugs Bunny. Pitching, Bugs Bunny. Third base, Bugs Bunny. As I said, these videos are just kind of a hope that to wait to find a connection. Now, I've gone to writers groups, I've gone to filmmaking groups and sometimes it leads to groups getting together and saying hey let's do this thing and then you get close and then it all falls apart. I did the 48 hour film festival a couple times which was wonderful I recommend it to any filmmaker um, but you know I had a group of friends doing that and eventually we all went our own way again and I haven't seen several of them in years as well. So I'm hoping if you're a creative whether you're acting or filmmaking, writing, um, pottery, painting, poetry, um, if you're doing mime work, I don't care. Just touch base, leave a comment, leave a link to your stuff. So hopefully other people will watch this and we'll connect and we'll at least get inspiration from one another for trying to do creative work, whether it's yourself or you have one or two other people, but to kind of band together, support each other, watch each other's stuff, um, maybe buy each other's stuff if you're selling something, um, just to support one another. So that's my hope. Future episodes, um, the next episode I plan to talk about my sh short film Keep You that I said, um, you know, why I'm doing it. It's a horror short film. It stars my kids, it stars me. I'm the main actor in it. So that was a new challenge. That was another challenge I wanted to give myself this year. I wanted to get back into acting or I guess back into it. <laughs> the last time I did it was maybe sixth grade. Um, 
but I want to get into acting and so there was the challenge of being on both sides of the camera I have my daughter helping do camera work but I'll get into the challenges of that and making that film um, I'll do another one on another short film that I've been working on forever called play space um, links to these are below that's been going on for about seven years now, I think. We shot it on 90% green screen, so I'll talk about turning my garage into a four-wall green screen studio, how I did that, and the challenges I'm trying to make virtual sets. I'm learning new software, I'm learning Blender, I'm learning Unreal Engine. I'll just do episodes on how I did all of that. Maybe some people can pick up some things or drop some tips below. Um, and like I said, maybe people can connect and start working together. So that's my hope. Thank you for tuning in and keep creating. Thanks.